Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you 6 insane things you can do with C Sharp that you probably didn't know were possible or legal C Sharp, but it really is. And be very careful, these are not best practices or things you should be doing, but they're very good things to know that C Sharp can do and can support because you might be able to find a way to use them in something that does really work for your team and your code base. Now, this is more of a fun video of things that I like experimenting with. And I'm sure if you watch my videos, you will enjoy this one. And the last one that I'm going to show you in this video is actually insane. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, let me show you what I have here. I'm going to start with the first one, which will look very, very odd. And that's the following. I'll go to my program .cs over here and what I want to do is I want to write something that points to this test.txt file then reads it as a string and prints it in the console. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say var file path and I have this file path record over here which I'm going to show you in a second and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say new file path over here and then I'm going to just point to that path. Now, in this case, I'm only going to point to the solution level folder. So I'm going to say this because I want to continue with my weird, insane technique. So what I'm going to say is that actually this is the base path, not the file path. And this is the file path over here. And now the file path is the base path plus the name of my project. So how would you do that? Well, forward slash, right? So forward slash and then, well, forward slash and then the name of the file I want to read. So test.txt, of course. And that is legal C sharp. And I can go here and I can say console.writeline file.read all text, point to the file path, and then get the path and print it. And in the console, you're going to see hello, it did successfully read the file. So how did we do that? Well, as you might have imagined, this file path is a bit special because it has an overloaded operator, the division operator, which happens to be the one that splits paths as well. So we can split the path in a way in code. I know it's a bit nuts, but I've also seen people overload the pipe operator as well. And the context in which they do actually does make sense. But this would allow us to do something like this, for example, and this is also legal C sharp, and this would also work. The way I've seen this is in the CLI wrap library to chain multiple commands uh, together and pipe them one into the other. I think it's pretty cool. And for the love of God, don't use this, but it is pretty interesting that you can do that and you can reuse things that we've been known to use for a certain way and reuse them in a different way that still sort of makes sense. By the way, if you want to grab the code for any of these examples, the code is in the description down below. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero, Refactoring for C-Sharp Developers. In that course, Nick Cosentino, a principal software engineering manager in Microsoft, is going to teach you everything you need to know from the very basics on some pretty advanced stuff on how to refactor your C-Sharp code. You're going to understand not only the how, but also the why we make the decisions we make. And at the end of this course, you will know how to refactor and write better C -sharp code. Nick has been working at Microsoft for the past three years and he has really seen some good and some bad things. So he really knows what he's talking about and he poured his heart into this course. Now to celebrate the launch of this course, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code. So use the link in the description and use discount code REFACT20 at checkout to claim it. These do tend to go very quickly. So use it sooner rather than later. Now back to the video. The next one I've shown many, many times, but it doesn't get old. So let's go ahead and say console dot right line time provider dot system dot get utc now and do that twice and let's say i want to wait for two seconds between these two calls how would i do that well you might say traditionally that you can say task dot delay for two seconds and certainly if i do that and i run my code i will have first the current time then a two second delay and then the next time but what if i just say i wait two I can do that. I can go ahead and do that and say, run this. And if I do that, I'm going to have a delay for two seconds, as you can see over here. How the hell was that possible? Well, if you watched any of my past videos, you might have seen that there's actually the ability to await anything in C Sharp. And the way this works is by doing something like this. All you need to do is add the get awaiter extension method on the type you want to await. 
And then as long as that thing returns a task awaiter, which some of them you can reuse, for example, I'm reusing the task delay, but some of them you can write on your own, then anything can be awaited in any way. Now, for the love of God, don't do this because the problem with this is it doesn't really explain exactly what to is supposed to represent. I've seen people do do seconds, for example, and make extension methods. Yeah, that's more acceptable, but also it's a bit weird. So maybe don't do it, but it is there. So if you can think of something that could have a customer waiter to become a waitable, well, it's for you to take and use however you want. Now, let's say I want to iterate from zero to five. What I can do in C sharp is I can say var zero here, and then as long as i is less than five, then i plus plus or less or equal than five actually because I said go all the way to five and if I do that I can say console dot right line I I can right line the I and I'm gonna see from zero to five in the console and that is fine but I don't think it's as cool as doing something like this where you can say for each for example and I'm gonna say for each I in five and if I simply do that I'm gonna just delete my for loop just have my for each loop and then print that in the console and I have the exact same thing. In fact, if I want to go from 5 to 10 and enumerate over that, I can do something like this and say from 5 to 10, go ahead, loop around, and I'm going to have that over here. How the hell is that legal C sharp, you might be asking? Well, let me show you. The way this is legal C sharp is by having these two classes over here, the custom int enumerator, which will be reused by these extension methods. So as long as a class or a struct has a current integer pointer and then the move next boolean, you can have a custom enumerator. And what I'm doing over here is I'm using the range to enumerate a range of integers, but I can also have the extension method on the integer itself. And it doesn't have to extend anything or implement any interfaces because as long as it matches the type through duct typing, it will be acceptable. So as you can see over here, this just works. Again, one of those things that you want to be very careful with, but this means you can add the enumeration capability to any type, not just integers or range. If you have something that you think should be able to be enumerated, you can do that. An example would be, let, let's say you have a, a directory object where you have a directory and you want to enumerate all the files in the directory. What you could do is you just for each items in directory, and as long as you have an enumerator for that directory, this would work. I think it's a pretty cool thing that you can do this and you can get very creative to think of ways to make good use of this. Now, the next one I call extension nonsense, which I've seen quite a lot actually in my life, but let's say you want to represent today's date in a way that you think is fluent and makes sense. What I've seen people try to do is add extensions on things that shouldn't have the given extension and then wrap logic around that. For example, today is the 30th of November 2023. So if I want to represent today in that way, I might be tempted to do 30 of November 2023. And then if I go and I print that, then as you're going to see, this will generate behind the scenes today's date, 30th of November, 2023. Don't do this. Don't add, especially in things as fundamental as integers, extension methods that shouldn't really be there. Imagine that I went ahead and I made an extension method per year to do something like this. It reads nice on the surface level and it looks smart. I can see how especially a junior developer would think this is smart but be very careful with your extension methods on types especially that you don't own and the bcl types that they've used widely and they're not supposed to have this sort of thing now the next one is very interesting i recently found out about this red twitter post and that post was from sergey tepliakov i'm so sorry if i butchered your name but what sergey showed is that let's say i want to have an object over here and i want to lock it to make sure that no other thread goes through that object so i have a thread safe block and you could do this by saying lock the object itself and then have some magic let's say console.writeline this was locked and thread safe for example and if i go ahead and i run this this will just work you won't really see anything about the lock itself but what sergi showed is that you can go ahead and create a monitor class you can change the namespace to system.dot 
threading, which is exactly where the native monitor class lives in C Sharp. And you can add a couple of methods. The first one is the enter static method and also the exit static method. And then the object is the object that's being locked. And then the lock taken is the lock taken on that object. This means that you can do something like this and say entering lock over here and exiting lock over here. And if you just do that and this file exists in your assembly, if I just run the exact same code again, watch what happens. Now the code will detect the monitor class, will go through the enter method first and then to the exit method, and you're going to see all that printed in the console. I don't know why or how, and I'm not really comfortable that anyone can just make any type like this and potentially change the behavior, but it's something you can do and it's pretty nuts. I'd really like to know if you can think of a way to make good use of this because I'm sure something is here, but I don't know exactly what that is. Now, the last one is actually nuts and it's so nuts the compiler of my ID won't even recognize it as legal C sharp, but it is legal C sharp and it will compile. So let's just, to prove a point, say console.hello world over here, just right line. And then behind that, what I'm going to make is an async, async, async of async with async, which awaits an async. This is valid C sharp. If I go and I just build this, it works. Build succeeded with warnings, but it did work. It does run. It prints hello world. This is not illegal C sharp. In fact, I can chain a few asyncs here. So I can say async the async with async of array async with some async over here. And if I do that, this is also legal C sharp. This works. How? Well, with a lot of <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Basically, we created uh, a class async that uses the async method builder attribute of type builder, which uses a lot of sort of duct typing in a way to represent a custom awaiter, state machines, and so on. It's pretty insane. I don't fully understand it, but Jared Parsons, who is working in the compiler team, first showcased this. And I think Fred, who's also working, I think, for the .NET team, showcased how you can do this array thing. And it's kind of nuts and I'm scared. Why is this legal C sharp? I don't know, but it is. And now you have this information again. If you want to grab any of that code, it is in the description down below. But now I want to know from you, what's the most insane thing you've done with C sharp? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.